Yeah, I think there is, there is a perception issue. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it might also be related to previous experiences, not in the, in the 12 months. So, you know, basically, oh, I'm not, uh, I won't even try because I'm not going to actually get the finance. Uh, but, I, you know, I always think that if a, a project or a business is bankable, the money will be there. Um, there's no question about it. So, and, and often it's uh, not that the project isn't bankable, but that the business plan that's presented uh, isn't convincing and hasn't been put together sufficiently well um, for, for the, the bank to actually understand the business proposition. So I, that's why we've, you know, put so much emphasis on, on education and, um, and, and information dissemination as, as to really actually help the client present the best case to the bank. Mm. Because there are some great ideas out there, you know, from the really small micro businesses. They've got really good ideas and deserving of finance, and maybe they don't get it be just simply because of the way it's presented, and, uh, and that's very unfortunate, I mean. Nazim, for you, you would, you would finance great ideas with no collateral? I, I think just to take a step backwards, if you, if you talk about access to, if, if you talk to most small businesses, when you ask them what are the biggest challenges confronting them, the first one they're gonna say is access to finance. Now you've got to dissect access to finance. It has many components. The one is availability. Is there money available? Uh, sitting where I sit, I think that there, there's more money available than there are good business ideas. Right? Uh, that's the one point. And, and there's I, I agreement. What, the, 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 the funny part is, right, when I used to not work at business partners, it's a long time ago, I used to think, my God, if in order to get money from a bank or finance, we're not a bank. Some of my best friends are, but we are not a bank. <laughs> so so I, I used to think you've got to give them your arm and your leg and pledge all your children and grandchildren and so on in order to get money. Sitting inside of finance house, I've got 70 people out there who, who are not going to get increases or bonuses if they don't do business. So, and we've got money. So there's a, lot of business, there's a lot of money available. I'm sure the same thing applies to the banks. As well. So I think the one thing is availability of finance. I think they, there's a lot of money available. The other one is the pricing of the finance, which also impacts on accessibility. If it's too expensive, then it's going to kill your business. So, so I think that's something one needs to consider. And the third part is communication. And the communication is a two-way street. I think financiers, ourselves included, we do a really bad job at communicating what it is that we are looking for, mm. what our criteria are, and, and, and other financiers do the same. And I guess on the other hand, entrepreneurs do the same thing. They go to everybody looking for money, not knowing what the criteria of the different institutions are, and when they knock on the doors of some institutions and they don't meet the criteria, and somebody says no to them, that people say access to finance is a problem. So, so there, there's a whole basket of issues. You're right. Um, as an investor, not a banker, we, we think that we encourage our colleagues, right, that the first question you don't ask somebody who comes to you with an application is, how much owner's equity do you have? Because that's one of the cornerstones of bank finance. Um, the second question we may not ask, but some of my colleagues do, I guess, is how much collateral do you have? We will ask those questions, but they are, they are not the fundamental questions on which we base our decision. Our decision certainly as a financier and an investor is based on viability. Now, viability is, is a little bit like beauty. Right, it's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Uh, but but we, we, when we talk about viability, we talk about cash flow viability, right? So we, we have a 33-year history of doing risk finance to SMEs. We're, we're at risk. So when we assess whether we want to finance or not, we look at the viability. What do we mean by that? We, we look at the cash flow. We look at, based on reasonable assumptions of revenue expenditure into the future, is this business veering towards being cash flow positive? Right. There are months in which they are not going to be cash flow positive, for which they can rely on the bank for an overdraft. But other than that, we would consider. The other thing we, we, we I, I said the, first, the second question we don't ask is how much collateral do we have? But the presence or the absence of collateral determines the risk that the finance, the extent of the risk the finance is, is, uh, is taking. If there's no collateral, that means all our funding is at risk. That means we, because we're taking a big risk on that transaction, we expect to make a high return, and therefore the greater the cost of our capital. It's normal, uh, it's normal, high risk, high, high return we expect to make. And the, that cost might very well mean that the funding is inaccessible to that particular business because it doesn't have the ability to generate the cash flows which can repay 
uh, of, 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 of the price of money based on there being no collateral. So again, I think there's a lot of money available. If you look at uh, uh, governments doing a lot through CIFA, if you look at the banks trying to, to get into the SME space, sometimes because they want to and other times because they, they may feel that or, or obliged to do so based on wanting to meet B scorecards and so on. There are organizations like ourselves who do nothing else but provide risk finance. So there's a lot of capital. I think the trick is all of us, we need to com communicate better and I think entrepreneurs do, need to do a little bit more homework before they decide which financiers to approach.